Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing now how nicotine actually causes addiction. Okay, right, so I want to now discuss with you uh, the structures that lie above the ponds. So let's draw the brainstem out again now when we've removed the cerebral hemisphere. So here's the ponds sitting here, okay? And I won't draw the cerebellum again either. So here's the medulla underneath the ponds. And then further underneath the medulla, you'll then have the spinal cord, which we're not interested in either. Then above the pons, what you have is a structure known as the midbrain. And we're going to study this because this is where the first component of our story is. This is where what's known as the ventral tegmental area is. So this structure here that I'm circling in red, this is the midbrain. Okay, now again, this is a side view. We are looking from the left-hand side. All we've done at the moment is cut away um, the cerebral hemispheres. Now what I want to do is look from above. So I'm going to change my aspect and look from above. Okay, so what do you see if you look from above down onto the midbrain? Okay, so you see a structure that looks kind of like this. And if you actually ever do see one of these on an MRI scan, they're fantastic. In fact, I would suggest you do Google a picture of the midbrain because the, the way you can recognize it is it looks like Mickey Mouse. My drawings of it always end up looking more like a pig than Mickey Mouse. Uh, but when you actually see the real thing, it does look like Mickey Mouse. So here then comes around like this. So it has these two sort of protuberances in the front, like ears of Mickey Mouse. Okay, now what other structures do you see if you look at a slice of the midbrain? Okay, well we are looking quite high up in the midbrain, so we're looking sort of towards the upper portion of it. And what you see basically is you see two structures here which are very important. You'll hear a lot about these um, in other, um, in other topics. Uh, this is the substantia nigra, and, and this is extremely important in the uh, nigrostriatal dopamine system, which is important in the motor system, substantia nigra. So this is another dopamine system that you have uh, involved in the motor system, but not, we don't think, in reward. Okay, and these are the portions which undergo degeneration in Parkinson's disease. Okay, right. Other structures of the midbrain, then, you have two structures here, which look like the eyes of Mickey Mouse. And these are what are known as the red nuclei. Okay, again, they're quite important in the uh, motor system. Red nucleus. They're important in relaying information from the cerebellum to uh, the uh, cerebral cortexes. And since the cerebellum is very important in motor um, um, motor calibration. Uh, these are very important for that. And then underneath this, what you have is a structure known as the periaqueductal gray. And this is the bit that always ends up looking like a pig when I draw it. Okay, so this looks like the snout of a pig when I draw it. But in the reality, it doesn't look so much like a snout of a pig. Okay, so this is known as the periaqueductal gray. And you might be wondering, well, why is it called that? Peri means around. Aqueductal means pertaining to an aqueduct, uh, and grey just refers to its colour. Okay, so it's around this little tube in the middle. So let me colour this little tube in the middle in. So this in the middle here, this is what's known as the cerebral aqueduct, and this sort of goes through the uh, midbrain and then down into uh, the fourth ventricle. Okay, so this is the cerebral aqueduct. Okay, right. Now, what other structures shall I show? Just for interest, I'll also show on here the uh, nucleus of the third cranial nerve. So, sitting on either side of the periaqueductal gray, you have the two nuclei of the um, third cranial nerve, the ocular motor nerves. So, these are the nuclei of CN, means cranial nerve. And then you put in Roman numerals three. And I'll just note that that is the oculomotor nerve. Okay. And then coming from 
the uh, nucleus of cranial nerve 3, what you'll see is like a projection. When you actually look at these things, you'll see a projection like this coming through. And you might be able to guess what this is now. This is the third cranial nerve here. So this is cranial nerve 3, both of them. This is, on this side, this is the um, right cranial nerve 3. And the other one's the left cranial nerve 3. And they're important in moving the eyes. Okay, right. So there's a bit of background noise, a bit of background information. Where is the ventral tegmental area? Well, basically, the ventral tegmental area is this sort of area here. Okay. So in green, right at the front, so ventral means at the front, uh, tegmental refers to um, the, um, up, well, it refers to a portion of the, um, it refers to a portion of the brainstem. It refers to the frontal portion of the brainstem. So this is the ventral tegmental area, or often referred to as the VTA for short, ventral tegmental area. Okay, so VTA. Right, so the neurons which have their cell bodies within the ventral tegmental area, these are what are going to fire in response to a reward, okay? Uh, so, when you get a reward, let's say when Toby gets his piece of bacon, these ventral tegmental area neurons are going to start firing, okay? And what we're going to see is that drugs of abuse, and in particular nicotine, is going to also activate these neurons in the ventral tegmental area to fire. So let's have a look at where these neurons in the ventral tegmental area go to. Where do they project to? Well, basically, they project to a nucleus known as the nucleus accumbens, okay, or the accumbens nucleus, for those people who are feeling posh. Okay, so, where is the nucleus accumbens? Well, this gets a little bit more complicated. Basically, we're, we're going to have to show where this is, and to show where this is, we're going to have to do quite a few more little uh, neuroanatomical structures. Okay, so we're going to do a bit of more neuroanatomy now. So basically, sitting on top of the midbrain, which I'll draw here, there is an egg-like structure known as the thalamus. And in fact, you have two of these. So in turquoise here, you have two thalami, okay? Right, so let me show you this from another one of these pictures. I'm not going to draw it over what I've just drawn there. Um, but I'll draw another midbrain, so a smaller one this time. So here comes the midbrain again probably end up being a better picture than my main one now, just sods law. Right, there we go, there's the midbrain. Ah, uh, no, it wasn't. Right, so this is just a cheaper version of this picture here, okay? And sitting on top of the midbrain, you have these egg-like structures known as the thalami. So you have one on each side. You have the left thalamus and the right thalamus, okay? So this is what it looks like from the side. This is what it looks like from above. Okay, so these are the thalami. Now, let's do some more neurological structures. Okay, so sitting outward from the thalami, sitting lateral to the thalami, you have some more structures. Okay, and I'll draw these like so. I'll draw them as little lens structures because they are actually known as the lenticular nuclei. Okay, so here they go. So these are sitting at the same level as the thalamus, so let me show you all this on here. So they're sitting at the same level as the thalamus, but they're sitting to either side of the two thalami. So it will be sitting sort of like in front of this. If we were to actually look at this from the left, we'd see the lenticular nuclei, as they're called. Uh, well, one of the lenticular nuclei, the um, left lenticular nucleus. Uh, we'd see that uh, in front of the thalamus. Okay. So here comes the other one, the right lenticular nucleus. Okay, and they're called lenticular nuclei simply because they look slightly like lenses. So these are the lenticular nuclei. Okay, so lenticular nuclei. And basically they consist of a bunch of other uh, brain structures. So I'm going to divide them now up into little pieces. Okay, so the first division we'll make is here. So 
will divide off this most lateral portion of the lenticular nucleus here. Okay? And this is a portion known as the putamen. So in blue, whoops, in blue here, this is the putamen. Okay, so this is the putamen. Okay, and then this other portion here in uh, uh, more medial to the putamen is the globus pallidus. And we'll continue this video, uh, this discussion in the next video.